Today we're going to take a look at the Scalotrain's rivet counter, Southern Pacific GE-9 diesel locomotive, and it features the Southern Pacific bloody nose livery, which you can see in the front is colored red for the nose. And we've got SB for Southern Pacific. So on the top we've got the number boards, they're using this old style of writing like serif font. They got red grab irons, some windshield wipers, sand filler hatches, more grab irons on top of the nose, a nose mounted headlight, a door with a window on the side, and the ladder. We've also got some inner stanchions with some ditch lights and apparently there is a fire extinguisher inside then down below we have the anti-climber with a yellow mu cable it's actually connecting to the anti-climber with a thin piece there also are some tiny little numbers written down here here we got the coupler cut lever airline hoses in the middle and on the sides we've also got a large plow it's one of the largest i've ever seen and here we're going to take a look on the sides here we got the side steps got painted white there's a tiny little label on one of them and white on the bottom step and there's your F for front. The cab also features an interior which is painted in a light brown color. You can see all around. You do have seating inside. The cab windows are actually interesting. There's like two boxy ones and one has rounded corners in the front. Sunshade up there and the road number 8168. And down below we got some latches for some panels. And check out the cool graphic design they put inside the bloody nose. Got some stripes on the inside. We got the jack pad embedded into this part that drops down on a lot of GE locomotives. We've also got this interesting red line that goes to the middle of this truck. Apparently it is a speed recorder so it's a device that measures how fast the axle is actually going. There's definitely a lot of details inside, some plumbing you can see even underneath the frame. And you can also see the sanding lines in the front and the back of this GE hi ad truck. It also has a spare coupler holder here and a steel bell on the side of the fuel tank. Behind the cab we have two orange vents. The railing drops down 90 degrees. There's a ladder in the back of this cabinet here which has some vents. Some really tiny lifting rings up where here here. Then moving down along in the bottom there's a emergency fuel cutoff switch and the diesel fuel fillers which have a red cap and two different fuel gauges on the sides. One's round and one's vertical. It's actually amazing. A lot of the text here is actually legible. Then up on the top we got an air filter and some tiny little warning labels. Then we got the Southern Pacific speed lettering logo which was the last logo they used. Then we got some molded on details for the panels which open up in real life to access the interior. Then in the back we have the radiator which does have a ton of vents and we also got the handbrake here in the middle and these vents are also see-through so you can see on the inside we've got a lot of warning labels lots of red ones here at the top and then black and white ones throughout we've also got this towing chain down here which is disconnected from the truck and some more tiny text which you can actually read lots of underside plumbing although there might be too much glue right here so here's the back it also features a red face there's a ladder on the left hand side a top mounted headlight a sand filler hatch and the road number on the deck we have some stanchions, chain in between it. It's pretty similar to the front, just there's no plow. And on the top there's these weird bumps, I have no idea what's it for. If you do, let me know down in the comments section. So here's what it looks like on this side. So these vents are actually all uniform, they're the same height compared to the other side which kind of varied a lot. Then moving along, down at the bottom we have this silver air filter dryer. They basically clean and dehumidify the air that's used in the air brake system. Also got another spare coupler holder on this truck. Then on the sides we got these two air air tanks with brackets on the top. This side also does have the fuel cutoff switch and the fuel gauges and the fuel fill. And here we have a silver inline final filter and this gray piece that juts out which I have no idea what's it for. And then we have this elevated portion here. I believe this is where they have the battery. It got some steps in the front. Air filter on the sides. Some more vents over here. There actually are see-through. And then we have an engineer side door with a windshield wiper in the window. And we also got the engineer side view mirror along with this larger mirror which is featured on the other side as well well. And we also have the manufacturer's General Electric logo down here. Now let's go check out what the roof looks like. On top of the cab we have two Sinclair antennas for communications and end of train telemetry. Also got a grab iron right there in the front. We've also got this cool tactile roof so there's a bit of a tread right there. The nose does have a center line in the middle and the walkway also does have some treads. The steps are also see-through. Behind the cab we have some nice labeling here. You can see the latches molded on. Very nice looking. There's a small vent on top and these panels, I think they're actually separate pieces because they do stick out. Then we got this Nathan P3 train horn, some molded on panel doors, and there is a silver exhaust stack which has an actual hole. Now the back radiator does have a nice grill detail, you can see through it, along with some treading on the edges. There also is a grab iron right there. Now let's go take a look at the underside. Here we got the truck, fuel tank got lines in it, and here's the other side. 
Now let's compare it to my BNSF. Both these locomotives are Dash 9s, but they are from different eras. The Southern Pacific is from the 1990s, BNSF from the late 2010s. Now the first thing I've noticed was just how tall the SP snowplow is. Maybe in the old days it was more common to have a larger snowplow, but all the Jeevos I have right now, they have a shorter one. The cab roofs are also different. You can see the older SP has Sinclair antennas, while the modern BNSF has the PTC antenna and a GPS dome. The SP also does have some extra panels on top of the roof, which aren't present in BNSF, which uses a K3LA horn, while SP uses a P3. The placement of the sand filler hatch in the back are also different. One is on the top, while the other one is sort of in the body. SP has one road number here in the middle, while BNSF has two. It also has spare knuckle coupler holders on the pilot, while the SP has it on the truck. There's also a hole on this side, which is not present on the BNSF. They also use a different type of air dryer. SP uses Twin Tower, while BNSF has Salem. Also, the manufacturer's builder plates are different styles since they are 20 years apart. The SP also has three side windows of the cab, while the BNSF has this modern four window design. SP also has a speed recorder on the front truck here, and struts covering out the bearings of all four side frames, which is not present in BNSF. Scale trains are also using this darker, richer brown for the Southern Pacific couplers, which are more vibrant. The BNSF also has FRA safety striping, which are reflective stripes mandated by the FRA, which was not yet required when Southern Pacific last ran in 1996. I also figured out how to use the Aurora Miniatures container peg. So basically you cut it out of the sprue, you don't need that stringy bit there. And you simply add it to the roof holes on top of the container. And it will keep the top container in place, otherwise it will slide off.
So for my final thoughts, I think the Scale Trains Rivet Counter Southern Pacific Dash 9 is a really well detailed model. Its prototype is from the 1990s, so it is the oldest locomotive I have. I also want to give a big shout out to Scale Trains, they actually sent me this for free. One day I got an email from Drayton, their brand marketer, and they wanted to send me a model to review and make a video on. So I'm really happy because Scale Trains is one of my favorite brands. My first locomotive ever was the Scale Trains CSX Jeevo. They actually let me pick any Dash 9 that was in stock, so I chose the Southern Pacific because although Southern Pacific is a defunct fallen flag railroad, I still think they're one of the most iconic American railroads. Plus, I really like the bloody nose color scheme. It was interesting to see the differences comparing it to my BNSF Dash 9, although they're the same type of locomotive there's going to be a lot of differences like having a speed recorder and spare knuckle coupler holders on the truck three cab side windows the tall plow the placement of the sand filler hatches i also like the new branding that they're doing on their packaging i feel like it brings a nice clean modern look to scale trains but yeah that's pretty much it for the video i hope you guys enjoy it if you do make sure you hit that like button down below subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys in the next one bye